Hi, my name's Phil, I like talking about politics and in this video I'd like to discuss the uh, topsy-turvy political world we're now in where people who had hitherto talked about abstaining being weakness now actively want Labour to abstain on any Brexit deal that emerges. But as Labour are abstaining on votes today for Johnson's new Covid rules, I'm actually going to have to consider whether the leadership's stated reasons might not also apply to Brexit. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So this video really it's going to be about Labour's relationship with Boris Johnson's better than nothing but not as good as it should be Covid and Brexit response because the parallels in this regard are almost exact and so can easily be compared. But it's also I suppose a wider discussion on party politics and a look at whether Labour are going to be getting their strategy right or not. Now I've talked twice already about the options that Labour have when it comes to how to vote on a Brexit deal. Should it emerge? It hasn't emerged as yet, but there's an awful lot of uh, optimism, um, allegedly. Now, so should Boris Johnson present one to Parliament, obviously Labour need to get their position sorted because it's not like they're likely to have a lot of time to think about it. And I wasn't going to discuss it again until it actually happened because it's all very speculative. But then this COVID change of position occurred. So Boris Johnson is, is putting his new COVID tier system for England to Parliament today. May have already happened by the time you watch this video. Um, doesn't matter. It will go through. There, there's no need for me to wait until it's until it's the vote has happened. It will go through. Um, but it should have easily gone through because Labour would have supported it. But Starmer has announced that Labour is actually going to abstain. Now, the stated reason for this is the measures are better than nothing. So there's no reason to vote against it. They wouldn't oppose it. But it doesn't go far enough with financial support for the hospitality sector, which is particularly badly hit by any sensible COVID restrictions, of course. Fair enough. Fine. Uh, in isolation, that position is absolutely fine. Uh, and Starmer has made an issue on a number of occasions that the government should be supporting any businesses that would be perfectly viable were it not for the pandemic and were it not for the pandemic's measures. So this makes it very awkward for Boris Johnson. Not in terms of his COVID strategy, if we can be charitable and call it that. Because the only way the government would be defeated on this vote realistically is for Labour to vote against it, which they won't. They're not doing that. They're not even discussing that. But if a hundred Conservative MPs do vote against it, and that is possible according to some reports, Boris Johnson at the moment is in a bit of a panic to try and get as many MPs as possible to support this. If that did happen, then Johnson's authority weakens substantially. And by abstaining, what Labour will be saying, reading between the lines, is they'll be telling the government loud and clear, all we had to do was vote against this and you'd have been defeated. We can dis we can sink any part of your legislative programme that gets a significant rebellion on your back benches because we'll just join them and sink it. At which point Johnson's boast at the start of the year looks a little more embarrassing. But this move will of course shine a spotlight on the potential for Brexit deal voting as well. Now I've said before there are no good options for Labour here. There isn't an obvious vote for Labour. Um, I talked about the four available in an earlier video. The Labour leadership, as far as we can tell, are minded to vote in support of the deal on the basis that it's better than nothing and a platform from which to build. Now, in truth, as long as Labour don't vote against it, there are benefits and drawbacks to every choice they have. And I think they could get away with either supporting, abstaining or offering MPs a free vote, which I've said I would see as the safest option of them. But as literally nobody else seems to be talking about that, it comes down to abstain or support. Now, the leadership want to support it. A lot in the centre and the centre left in the party want the party to abstain. Some Labour MPs feel so strongly about it that they are prepared to rebel over the issue, which means including some on the front bench resigning effectively. Now that would be embarrassing for Starmer. That's, it's never good to have rebellions of that nature, particularly senior ones for the leadership. What I can't say is why these MPs feel that strongly about it. 
you know, I had a few little debates with people on Twitter over the weekend who were in favour of abstention. It seems to be, you know, it seems to be a significant amount of support for abstention. But I had to say at the time, no one's given a reason why. You know, when these people have been arguing for the move, it's all in terms of the dangers of supporting it. Highlight, oh, it, it, you know, there's this danger of supporting the deal. There's this danger. There's this danger. Therefore, we should abstain without actually acknowledging the dangers of abstaining. Now, for my money, if you're going to argue for a political course of action, you have to face up to the problems that come with it. Otherwise, you risk becoming trapped. But then someone said something interesting. They said that Brexit is going to be a mess and Labour are going to have to really press the government on it from next year, including at PMQs. Labour have actually been pressing the government on Brexit, but not in PMQs because that is Brexit is Boris Johnson's happy place. You don't put the Prime Minister in their happy place during PMQs. That would be ridiculous. Now, I agree with this. Labour are going to have to press it next year, including in PMQs. Um, and they further said that Starmer wouldn't be able to attack Johnson over his Brexit handling if he'd whipped his Labour MPs to support the deal because he'd be tied to it. Now, at that point, as soon as he said that, I thought, ah, this actually is, is not true. Because not only do I not agree with it, I think I'm safe in saying that it's demonstrably untrue. Because normally when you talk, try and argue about, oh, if the party do this, then they won't be able to do this. Well, that's sort of speculation. You don't know until you've tried it. But although you can take sort of past examples. But if you take COVID as an example, as I said, parallel situation. Now, up until today, Labour have always voted in favour of the government's COVID measures. They've not been happy entirely with them. But they've done it in the national interest because it's better than not having those measures put in place. But despite consistently voting in favour of the government's measures, Starmer has still been free to attack Johnson's handling of COVID throughout on a weekly basis at PMQs. And not only has he called the government to account over COVID handling, because anyone could do that and it falls flat. It resonated with the public. The public haven't turned around and gone, you big hypocrite, you've been voting for these measures. Because he's not been attacking the measures as such, he's been attacking the lack of measures. And the same applies with Brexit. Starmer could easily press the government over Brexit mishandling the things the deal doesn't cover in exactly the same way as COVID mishandling. Even while supporting the deal that is a better than nothing proposal. But this abstention today may change things. I think it should change things. Now, like I said, Labour said that they will abstain today because though the new COVID rules are better than the status quo, nothing at all, they don't go far enough. Now, I personally think the real reason is to show Boris Johnson up. I, I think it's a little bit of politicking, but that's my opinion. As always, doesn't matter what the party is, what the politician is, I'm always happy to go along with their official reasoning unless it's clearly contradictory with their actions. So if Labour will abstain on something because although it's better than the status quo, it's not good enough, then that should mean they also abstain on the Brexit vote. Because this abstention is the second of its kind this year. Because they earlier abstained on legislation concerning undercover, dodgy undercover activities on the part of intelligence services, for example. They, they abstained on the basis it's better than the status quo, but it doesn't go far enough. Now, today, they're abstaining on the COVID measures because it's better than the status quo, but it doesn't go far enough. Now, when it comes to a Brexit deal from Labour's point of view, and we haven't seen it yet, there can't be an official announcement of what the policy is going to be from the party until they've seen it. But we know that it, it will definitely be something that is better than nothing, but doesn't go far enough. We know that. So why should Labour's position be any different? If Labour have abstained on two government motions because it didn't go far enough, it would seem very disjointed to then favour the Brexit deal with, with direct support, while still trying to say that it's better than nothing, but doesn't go far enough. You know, that point, see, I'd have to say I'd have been happy to support either abstaining or supporting a Brexit deal. You know, you can argue for both of them very strongly. But thinking that abstaining holds the slightly greater risk, I'd have, you know, I'd have been absolutely fine with saying, yeah, support the deal. That's that's OK. 
but I don't see how it's sensible for Starmer to support a Brexit deal if not only is there a lot of pressure from within the party to not do so, but, you know, so you've got a lot of pressure to abstain, but also if, if that position would be in contradiction with earlier abstention decisions. You know, like I say, abstaining and supporting, they both carry risks. And, and both will take some nifty footwork in order to be able to control the public narrative. But then let's be fair, if they're going to get themselves ready for government, they have to be able to control the public narrative anyway. So that's just a skill that is essential for any Labour leadership that wants to aspire to government. Now, one thing that was said by the only pro-abstention Labour supporter that offered detailed reasoning, Alistair Campbell, is... So he wrote a piece in The Independent where he said... So you also have to judge the political decisions through like the prism of media reporting. And he's quite correct. You know, there is a huge difference between the way the media in general, which is largely conservative back in, there's a difference between the way they report on Labour and conservative decisions. As much as I'd be happy to support voting in favour of the Brexit deal as a starting position and demanding much more from further negotiations, including customs union and re-entry into the single market, I'd consider it folly to do so after abstaining on COVID measures today. There's just no difference between the two sets of circumstances and it would surely be exposed quite badly in the media. So I would argue, given today, there probably is no justification for making a different decision on Brexit. But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.